If you really wanted to, you could chase thunderstorms all year long. No matter what month you choose, if you try hard enough, you'll find thunderstorms somewhere in the United States. Your chase might just look like this. Or this. But as the cold nights of winter give way to warm spring afternoons, severe thunderstorm season comes to life. If you're chasing storms, you're probably looking for one specific type, the supercell. Supercells are thunderstorms characterized by a persistent rotating updraft, also known as a mesocyclone. Supercells can produce extremely large hail, dangerous lightning, powerful winds, and of course, tornadoes. When conditions are just right, they can last for hours putting on an atmospheric show unlike any other. For as beautiful as these storms are, they are incredibly powerful and pose a significant threat to life and property. So what causes these supercells to form and what can we expect in 2024? The majority of the world's supercells and tornadoes occur right here in Tornado Alley. It takes a unique set of conditions to produce them. Moisture from the Gulf of Mexico surges northward. Colder air and a strong jet stream moves in from the Rockies. And a layer of warm, dry air known as the elevated mix layer advects in from Mexico. When everything is timed just right, typically in the spring, all of these ingredients come together to aid in the development of supercells. Outbreaks of supercells in Tornado Alley can lead to tornadoes, large hail, strong winds, and of course, incredible visual displays, a storm chaser's dream. But every year is different. Some years feature more supercells than others. Sometimes they occur more often outside of Tornado Alley. And other years, they're hard to find anywhere at all. What causes these changes? It's hard to know for sure, but one thing that meteorologists and storm chasers have figured out is that what goes on around Tornado Alley has a huge impact on how things go during the spring. One thing we're always watching is the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO. This is a recurring climate pattern involving changes in temperature of the waters in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. This impacts our weather here in the United States. The weather patterns that we experience during La Nina and El Nino are quite different, especially during the spring. Looking at some of the data available, La Niñas tend to favor more tornadoes but further east away from Tornado Alley, while El Niño conditions favor less tornadoes overall. But that's when things get really interesting, because this year, neither one is in complete control. In fact, we're expecting a transition from El Niño to La Niña during storm chasing season. So I went back and looked at years of the past that saw a similar transition during the spring. And as you can imagine, this is a lot of data. To my surprise though, some trends started to emerge. Take March for example. Here's what the analogs look like, and here are the latest forecast models for March. Pretty similar. Knowing we were on track so far, I started to roll these analogs forward into April, and then May, and they started to look really impressive for storm chasing. Notice in particular the blue area that keeps appearing on the west coast. That's signaling lower than normal heights, or troughing often associated with a jet stream being situated over the plains. That's one of the major ingredients needed for supercells and tornado outbreaks. One thing to note is that I used an assortment of analog years here, not just one year. Using one year from the past, like 2010 or 1991 for example, to set expectations for 2024 is a fool's errand. No two years are the same. Instead, we'll take a blend of years that have played out similarly and featured similar conditions to what we have right now, and that helps us get an idea as to how things might broadly play out this spring. There are also several other areas that we can look for clues. Sea surface temperatures give us a great view as to what's going on. I used oscillations and indexes, such as the North Pacific Oscillation, and several others around the globe to help build this list of analog years. I wanted to dive a little bit further into this, so I started searching for some research. Lo and behold, I immediately found a paper that discussed this exact thing. This paper discusses regional tornado outbreaks and their links to ENSO phases and North Atlantic SST variability. This line in particular got my attention, discussing how weak terminating El Nino events tend to boost the chances of tornado outbreaks in the Midwest during the month of May. The paper even breaks down the outbreak chance by ENSO state. 
We can find what's expected for this year, which is a terminating El Nino right here, with a heightened outbreak chance in the Plains and the Midwest. So let's recap and back up a second. This spring, we're expecting the transition from El Nino to La Nina to begin. Historical data and research shows that those transitions can be conducive to supercells and tornado outbreaks. Also, research on past years with similar conditions projects a pattern favorable for severe weather as well. It's hard to know exactly how this chasing season will play out. A long-range weather forecast is like a puzzle that always seems to need more pieces. We're constantly adjusting and tweaking our process, trying to put them into place. Supercells and tornadoes are incredibly complex, and predicting them this far in advance is extremely difficult. Still, based on what we know from this vantage point, it appears more likely than not that the spring of 2024 will be a better than average season for storm chasing. I expect several chances for supercells and tornadoes in the plains, particularly from late April into May. Storm chasers and photographers should be encouraged by the possibilities given where we stand today. If you live in the plains and are worried about these storms, don't be. Just be prepared. And as we get closer to spring, review your storm action plan, have a process in place, and be sure to follow forecasts carefully. Meteorologists and storm chasers will have many updates for you as we draw closer. For storm chasers, the long nights of winter are slowly beginning to fade into the warmer days of spring. The excitement is building. Supercell season is just around the corner, and this year's forecasts are as favorable as they've been in quite some time. It's almost time to hit the road.